Okay, uh, Narendran, you had asked a question about this. What is the remainder when 7 to the power of 103 is divided by 25? Yeah, so um, you said you don't know how to solve problems of this type. So let me answer not this problem, but a thing, uh, you know, problems in general of this form. Yeah, so the generalized question is this. What is the remainder when a to the power n is divided by b? Yeah, where a, n, and b are some natural numbers. So the first task we have to uh, undertake is to find a small power of a that is close to some multiple of b. Yeah, that's a very vague thing. What do we mean by small power? It's normally a power that does not exceed 4 or 5. Yeah? Because let's just face it, you know, if you have any number, uh, in this case we had 7, 7 to the power 4, 7 to the power 5, we're getting to be big numbers, yeah? huge numbers. So we want that power, the small power, so you know, something that does not exceed 4 or 5. What is close to a multiple of b? Yeah? That's uh, basically saying that the difference has to be less than b. We're looking for a remainder, remember? So the remainder cannot be greater than or equal to the divisor. So we want to look at for a remainder kind of a thing. So some power of a yeah, is very close to a multiple of b, their difference being less than b, therefore. So let's suppose that uh, a to the power m, some power that we found out, is k times b plus some l, yeah, l being the uh, remainder that we spoke about. Yeah, so a, b, k, m, and l are all natural numbers. So let n be q times m plus r. That's a straightforward thing from uh, Euclid's division algorithm. Yeah, so we get that. So a to power n would be a to power qm plus r. And I can write that as a to power m whole to power q into a to power r. But remember, a to power m we found out was kb plus l. So I can replace a to power m with kb plus l. I get kb plus l whole to power q into a to power r. Now, let's consider this kb plus l whole to power q. This is a binomial expression, and we can expand it now using the binomial theorem. But all the terms, except the last term, will have some power of b. In other words, all the terms, except the last, will automatically be divisible by b. So we have to only consider the last term. So the remainder when a to power n is divided by b is the same as the remainder when l to power q times a to the power r is divided by b. Yeah, remember, we had an a to the power r in the previous slide there. And the last term of this binomial expansion is l to the power q. So the remainder we are looking for is the same as the remainder we get when l to the power q times a to the power r is divided by b. Now, if we have identified the correct value of m, such that both l and r are as small as is possible, we will have a problem that's much easier to solve. Not necessarily a problem that we can solve very quickly, but we will have a problem that can be solved. So let's take an example. I'm not taking the one that you've given, so that you need to work on the one that you have been given. Yeah. So here, what's the remainder when 17 to the power 59 is divided by 24? Yeah, so I look at 17 squared, I found out that's 289. 289 can be written as 288 plus 1. 288 is 12 times 24. Remember, we needed a multiple of 24 here. So I've got 12 times 24 plus 1. So I can write 17 to the power 59 as 17 squared whole to the power 29 times 17 to the power 1. You can check with your theory of indices that the indices do add up. Yeah? So 17 to the power 59 now can be written as 12 times 24 plus 1 whole to power 29 times 17 to power 1, where the expression in the red comes from earlier, where we express 17 squared as 12 times 24 plus 1. Now, again, this expression in the red term is a binomial expression. And so all except the last term will have a factor of 24. And all, therefore, except the last term will be divisible by 24. And so the remainder when 17 to the power 59 is divided by 24 is the same as the remainder when 1 to the power 29 is times 17 to the power 1 is divided by 24. And that you can readily see that the remainder is 17.
now you may think oh wow he's chosen numbers that are nice or something let's take another example yeah what's the remainder when 8 to power 77 is divided by 17 yeah so here i can see that 8 cube is 512 which can be written as 510 plus 2 510 is a multiple of 17 so 30 times 17 plus 2 is 512 so 8 to power 77 now can be written as 8 cube whole to power 25 times 8 square. You can again check the theory of indices. But 8 cube can be replaced with 30 times 17 plus 2. So I have 8 to power 77 is 30 times 17 plus 2 whole to power 25 times 8 squared. Again, the red term is a binomial expression. It can be expanded. and everything except the last term will have a factor of seven, 17 and will be divisible by 17. And so the remainder now when 8 to power 77 is divided by 17 is the same as the remainder when 2 to power 25 times 8 squared is divided by 17. 2 to power 25 is that last term that we get there. Now this is not very helpful because uh, calculating 2 to power 25 can get to be quite problematic. Yeah. Uh, so let's try doing it in a different manner. I know that 8 is 2 cubed, so 8 squared would be 2 to the power 6. So 2 to the power 25 times 8 squared is nothing other than 2 to the power 31. So I can write that as 2 to the power 3 times 10 into 2 to the power 1. 2 to the power 3 is 8, so I get 8 to the power 10 times 2. This in turn I can be written as 8 cubed whole to power 3 times 8 times 2. Now I had a thing for 8 cube, right, from the first step. So I can replace 8 cube with 30 times 17 plus 2 whole, whole cube now. And then I have 8 into 2, which is 2 to power 4. So I have <coughs> 2 to power 25 times 8 squared is 30 times 17 plus 2 whole cubed times 2 to power 4. And so again, you can see that all except the last term will have a 17 as a factor. So it's the same remainder as when uh, as when 2 cubed times 2 to the power 4, 2 cubed being the last term here. So 2 cubed times 2 to the power 4 um, is divided by 17, but that's 2 to the power 7, 128, divided by 17 is the remainder 9. Okay, so it's very, very straightforward. We've had to do a couple of steps here, yeah, more. Than, than the previous example. This in turn could have been done in a different manner. Yeah? So same example, but now I can see that 8 squared is 64. This may have struck you, 8 squared, 64, which is 68 minus 4. Yeah? So I'm seeing uh, earlier we said that the remainder needs to be positive, and that is true for a remainder, it should be positive. But we can work with this manner also. Yeah? So 68 minus 4, 68 is 4 times 17. So 4 times 17 minus 4. So 8 to the power 77 can be written as 8 squared whole to the power 38 times 8 to the power 1, and you can check again. And so I can replace 8 squared with 4 times 17 minus 4, and I get that. Again, this is a binomial expression. Expanding that, everything except the last term will have a factor of 17. So the remainder when 8 to the power 77 is divided by 17, is the same as the remainder when minus 4, yeah, that's the, the last term will be minus 4 to the power 38 times 8 to the power 1 is divided by uh, 17. So now let's work with this, yeah, minus 4 to the power 38 times 8 to the power 1, uh, that can be written as 2 squared whole to the power 38 times 8, which recognizing that 8 is uh, 2 cubed, I get this as 2 to the power 79. So I can write this now as 2 cubed whole to power 2 times 13 times 2 to the power 1. Yeah, you can check the indices again. 2 cubed is 8, so I get 8 squared whole to power 13 times 2. But 8 squared, we had an expression for it. That's 4 times, 60, uh, 4 times 17 minus 4. So I plug that value in there. So the remainder, again, yeah, you can check that every term except last will have uh, 17, yeah, so I'm looking at the remainder, same as the remainder when minus 4 to power 13, which is the last term, times 2 is divided by 17.
So now minus 4 to power 13, now that's an odd power, so I will have a negative sign. And 4 is 2 squared, so you can check that I would get minus uh, negative uh, 2 to power 27. Yeah? And I can write 2 to power 27 as 8 squared whole to power 4 times 8. Yeah, you can check to see that that is indeed the case. And then uh, 8 squared can be written again as 4 times 17 minus 4. Once again, yeah, every term except the last term will be divisible by 17. So I have to take the last term. Uh, the last term is minus 4 to power 4. There is a minus sign in front of it, so that also shows up. And then I have an 8 outside. Okay, now minus uh, of minus 4 to power 4 times 8, it's a straightforward thing. It's 2 to power 11. That's 2048. So minus 2048 is divided by 17. We want the remainder there. Now when 2048 is divided by 17, uh, the remainder is 8. That's very easy to do. Uh, and so when minus 2048 is divided by 17, the remainder will be minus 8. But we can't have a remainder minus 8. And so the remainder actually is 17 minus 8 yeah, to get to the next, um, you know, you add 17 and you get that. That's the remainder 9, which is the same as what we obtained earlier. Okay, so I've, I've shown you uh, two different problems. I've shown you a generalized method, two different problems, and one of them I've done in two different ways. Yeah, So you should be able to solve these kind of problems now.